So by this time you have a theoretical understanding of how carbonate responds to base level changes. But we still need to understand case by case what the different facies could be and what are the different responses that isolated platform, ramps, etc. have to base level change. So in the next five classes we will do exactly that. I've been mentioning the Bahamas quite a bit during my class. I think it's time we go there. The Bahamas. I think this is probably one of the main reasons people choose to study carbonates, is to come to islands like this one. The Bahamas is the archetype of isolated platform. It's one of the most studied carbonate systems in the world. And this is because it's so rich with examples of you know past high stand, past low stands, but also because the Bahamas are very close from some spectacular universities in Florida and in the US, which makes it a very easy trip to the Bahamas to study modern carbonates. So we will use the Bahamas and other examples to understand what happens to isolated carbonate platform throughout relative sea level lowering, rising, and high stand. So let's look at some block diagram and let's start with the low stand system tract. So during the low stand system track, one thing to understand is, of course, sea level is low. Um, the carbonates on these um, atolls or these isolated platforms or anywhere in the world, really, those carbonates need to grow close to sea level. So even a few meters of relative sea level drop will expose the former reef and the former carbonates of the high stand. So it's very easy to expose them. The other thing to realize is because these are isolated systems, they grow in subtropical or tropical seas, but that's the key point. They're surrounded by the sea. And if you've ever been in a tropical zone, you know that there's a lot of evaporation during the day because of the heat. And then there's also a lot of storm and rainfall, which is a function of the humidity in the, in the atmosphere. So that means that during low stand, these isolated carbonate systems are always humid. They're never arid or dry. So you have humid conditions prevailing there. That implies, we'll have a chance to look in more detail uh, at this phenomena when we look at diagenesis, but that implies that during low stand, you can have a lot of carbonate dissolution, karstification, etc. And that can give rise to sinkholes. And this is a beautiful example here in the Bahamas of a sinkhole. You see that lake right there? It's essentially a sinkhole that is filled now with water. So that's one feature, dissolution. Another feature is that during low stand, typically the slope of the carbonate system is not very stable. So you have a lot of potential for debris flow and mass transport deposit. Here's a seismic example of this. In this seismic example, if you spend a bit of time studying it, you can see that we have some chaotic reflection with you know, some remnant of deformed strata. We also have abrupt truncation of some, um, some uh, strata that you can follow, but then all of a sudden there's an abrupt truncation. A few mounded structure, some semi-continuous, sub-parallel, and wavy reflection. There's a lot of chaotic lenticular reflection and even some uh, V-shaped erosion channels visible upslope. So if you interpret this, what you come up with is that you can see the slope apron. Remember, this is the end of the slope of the, um, of the Bahamas, which is extremely steep. And, and these sediments are interpreted as a series of Debrides, but also mass transport complex, MTCs. And around this, you have contrarite deposits. Contrarite deposits are essentially sediments that are moved by current at the base of the isolated uh, platform, the isolated system. So resedimentation is very important during low stands. Now, resedimentation is a function of the geometry of your platform. So you know by now that the Bahamas 
were not always as steep. In fact, if we look at their evolution from the Miocene, about 8 million years to today, in the Miocene, we had, you know, a relatively uh, lower angled slope. So the platform top and the basin were not separated by such a steep apron. So you had a lot of uh, turbidite deposit and some channel incisions during low stands. And as the time progress, we see that the geometry of this platform evolves to become more and more steep. And at some point when it becomes almost you know, 60, 70 degree, that's when you start to have mass transport deposits. That's when you switch from depositing turbidite sediments, so gravity flow um, types of sediment, to having mass transport complex, so actual collapse of the cliff because of the steepness of the slope. And you can see we have failure that it becomes easier as the angle of the slope increases. And now it is the, the preferred mode, if you want, of uh, resedimentation in the Bahamas. But slope steepness plays a big role in what type of mass transport deposits or turbidite you can expect uh, during low stands.